Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Geo Traders. My name is Taryn. My hair is totally white or kind of blonde now. Uh, and this is Simic Infect for Modern. So as you guys know, on Mondays, it's a modern Monday. That means I do a modern deck tech and a stream every single Monday on this channel right here on MTGO Traders. And today we're going to look at a nice, actually kind of like semi kitchen table, but kind of fun, uh, when on turn two, possibly uh, Simic Infect deck. If you're not up to speed in what Infect does, Infect is basically counters that you put on your opponent. And once they get to 10, they actually lose the game. So a lot of the creatures in our deck have Infect or all the creatures actually. Uh, so that means that we only need to get 10 points of damage rather than 20 uh, to close out a match. And it's actually possible to do that on a turn two, which is ridiculous. Of course, the factors for that is uh, we have a perfect Christmas land hand uh, and stuff like that. But if not, we get a possible kill on turn three, turn four, and so on. But this is just a fun tier two, kind of tier three deck uh, for you guys out there. That's a little budget uh, in the modern format. Really, really fun and can, of course, wipe an opponent off the slate or off the board uh, if they're not expecting it. But of course, before we get right into it, make sure to like the video. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure to hit the notification button to make sure you get all the videos whenever they go up on the channel right here on YouTube. But without further ado, guys, let's get to our first creature. This is the probably the hallmark infect creature in the deck. This is Glistener Elf. This is a four of a one mana, one one elf warrior with infect. And of course, this creature deals damage to creatures in the form of negative one, negative one counter. So if it does get blocked, it will most likely kill that creature as well, or weaken it substantially. Uh, and to all players in the form of poison counters as well. So of course, again, we, we just talked about that. If they get to 10, we automatically win the game. Very, very good for us. The only other creature in the deck here is Blighted Agent. Another great card for us. This is a four of two mana, one one human rogue with infect, and it's unblockable. That means if they have creatures in our way, we just go right through them with Blighted Agent. So a possible turn two win with Glistener Elf if we get that out on turn one, or a possible turn three or four win uh, with Blighted Agent with unblockable, which means if they have creatures on the battlefield like an elf deck or something like that, we can still get through them with Blighted Agent. And that is all the creatures in the deck, actually. That's that's it. It's it's super simple, super straightforward. Uh, there are other infect creatures you could add to the deck as well, like a regenerating snake and things like that, but you really don't want to worry about those cards. You really just want to get into the elf or the blighted agent and that is it so let's go over what the actual other spells in the deck do they're going to be pump spells and kind of hopefully digging for pump spells and hopefully keeping our creatures alive through removal so let's go over that right now first up we have the new card here from kaladesh it's blossoming defense a four of a one mana instant target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains hexproof until end of turn so this is a great card to get into trade against an opponent do some damage to them as well but also protect our creature if they have path to exile a fatal push something like that going towards our Blighted Agent or our Glistener Elf. There was an older card, I think it was called Ranger's Guide, uh, that was kind of this card, uh, but this gives us plus two, plus two instead of plus one, plus one, uh, and it also still gives us Huxproof, which is very, very good. That's exactly what we want when we want to present pressure, as well as kind of get around some removal. Uh, next up for us, we have Four Vines of Vastwood. This is at one mana instant with a kicker for one colorless, or one green rather, not colorless. And all kicker means is you can pay an additional one green mana as you cast this spell. Target creature can't be the target spells or abilities your opponents control this turn. That's for the just one uh, green mana instant, or if it was kicked, which means we pay two green mana, um, that creature gets plus floor, plus floor until end of turn. It's also an instant, so it can just be used as a straight up pump spell for our creatures as well, making our creatures, our one ones turn into five fives and dealing almost lethal, well, not completely lethal, but doing half of the 10 we actually need to get in for the win. Between Vines of Vastwood and Blossoming Defense, we have two or four, or actually eight, <laughs> cards in the deck uh, that are gonna be good at being able to uh, pump our creatures as well as hopefully trade with them, and of course, make sure our creatures are safe against spot removal. Moving on to some more pump here for us, we have four Might of Old Crosa. This is a one green mana instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If you cast this spell during your main phase, meaning this is basically a sorcery for us, uh, that creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn instead. So again, Might of Old Crosa is still a very good card for us, uh, being able to hopefully block if we need to block to make sure we survive the next turn, or if we just want to pay the greed on our turn, we get plus four, plus four, being able to get our one one into a five, five, and of course, swinging out for for hopefully five points of damage or to close out a game. Again, another fantastic card for us. It does not have the added caveat of the other two cards, which can protect our creatures, but Might of Old Crosa is a great one mana plus four plus four spell on our turn, which is great. Uh, next up for us, we have a Mutagenic Growth. This is a Phyrexian green mana, which we can pay a green mana for it, or we can pay two life. So if we're out of mana on the early turns, we can just pay two life because life for us is not that important uh, because really we want to do as much damage as possible with Infect as quickly as possible. Uh, so we want to pay our life because we have it basically as an expense to us. <laughs> basically, if we don't win between like turn
turn threes and fives, uh, we're most likely gonna lose the match, and paying two life for immunity and growth is perfectly fine. But it's an instant to four of, and of course target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So if we have multiples in our hand, we can pay four life, get plus four, plus four. If we have a little Crosa in our hand as well, that's another four, that's eight, plus the one, one, that's, you know, nine. That's so close to lethal, you can almost taste it. Of course, mutagenic growth uh, was a new Phyrexia card along with the other infect creatures we have in the deck here. Uh, just a great card overall, and one of the cards you must have, basically, uh, in any kind of infect deck, thanks to the ability to pay Phyrexia mana for it. Uh, next up here for us, we have four Distortion Strike. So there was a kind of debate between myself uh, and myself, you know, because we do that sometimes, or I do that sometimes, <laughs> where I had slip through space here instead of Distortion Strike. So Distortion Strike is a four of the deck. It's a one blue mana sorcery. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn and can't be blocked, and it has rebound, which means we can cast it on their next uh, turn without paying its mana cost, which is very, very good for us. So the plus one, plus zero is ultimately what made me decide over slip through space. Basically, slip through space is the same card, uh, but no plus one, plus zero, uh, and we draw a card instead of the plus one, plus zero. So I do think the plus one, plus zero is more important here, especially when we're trying to get in as much damage as possible. Of course, Blighted Agent is unblockable, but the uh, Glistener Elf is not. So if we have that out first, we can go for Distortion Strike on that, turn over turn with the re rebound, of course, and hopefully get in a closeout match there. But yes, I was uh, definitely debating between this one and Slip Through Space, but I do think Distortion Strike is ultimately the victor in that fight there. Uh, next up here for us, we have Apostle's Blessing, another card that helps protect our creatures. This is a four of a one carless, one white Phyrexian mana. Of course, we don't have Phyrexian mana in the deck. We can just pay two life for this because our life is not that important. We need to get in that infect damage. This is an instant target artifact or creature you control gains protection from artifacts or from the color of your choice until end of turn. So if a Path to Exile or a Fatal Push is heading our way towards our creature, we can use Apostle's Blessing, make it protection from white or black, of course, or maybe even red for a lightning strike, something like that. And Apostle's Blessing will protect our creature for the turn. And we only pay one colorless, of course, and just the two life on our own. Very, very powerful and very good at being able to make sure our creatures can last long enough to deal those 10 points of damage. Moving on to some other cards that kind of help us uh, sift through our deck for some more answers uh, to either protect our creatures or to pump our creatures. We have four opts here. This is one blue mana instant to scry one, which means we look at the top of our library. If we like it, we keep it on top. If we don't, we put it to the bottom of our library and we draw a card, which means we draw into the card we like or we draw into a new card. You can use Serum Visions here. And of course, Serum Visions is basically the opposite of this, but we get to scry too. So Serum Visions is one blue uh, draw card then scry to. Um, I like that, but I like the ability uh, to scry first before we get to draw a card. So we can scry and say, okay, do I want to draw this? If not, we ship it and then we draw a new card. If we have it on top and we do like it, we get to draw that card, which is awesome. Opt is low in the mana curve. It's very quick being an instant, being able to be played on our opponent's turn, and it can help us get through a tough uh, mana pocket uh, that we're actually drawing into. Another card to help us dig through answers as well is Peer Through Depths. This is a two of two carless instant and arcane. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from a among them and put that into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. So this is going to be hopefully going for a uh, Might of Old Crosa, Mutagenic Growth, maybe Blossoming Defense or Apostle's Blessing if we need the Evasion, or maybe even a Vines of Vastwood to get in their plus four plus floor if we have the two green mana available. Being able to dig five cards deep uh, with Peer Through the Depths is actually very, very good for us and hopefully can get through those mana pockets again that we really need to get through as quickly as humanly possible. And the last card in the deck besides lands for us is a four of Rancor great card right here. This is a one green mana enchant creature, or enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has trample. Trample is very important to us. When Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we return Rancor to its owner's hand. So if the Glistener Elf or the Blighted Agent does die when we have shields down or no cards in hand, uh, the Rancor does come back into our hand, so we can actually immediately put it back onto a Glistener Elf or a Blighted Agent once we draw into it again. But one of the best upsides to Rancor here is the trample. So if our opponent has a, you know, a Birds of Paradise, a 1-1 one -one or something like that on their side of the field, giving them mana, or just there to be able to block the infect damage. Having Trample here is really good at being able to get in, do some infect damage to our opponent, as well as destroy their creature in the process. While Rancor doesn't pump our defense or toughness, we have lots of cards in the deck that actually do, uh, so that's fine. I think that's okay. That means we're definitely going to get in two extra points of damage, along with the pump on top of our creature whenever they decide to chump one of their creatures. Overall, I love Rancor. I think it's very, very powerful, and of course, a must-have in this infect deck. And that is it for cards in the main board here. We have everything but land, so let's get over lands real quick. We have Hinter Land Harbor. This is a buddy land for us, having for green or blue if we control an island or forest in the field. Uh, next up for us, we have four Ink Moth Nexus. Uh, this is a card that actually becomes a 1 1 flying uh, infect creature for us if we don't have any other creatures on the battlefield. So, a great way for us to be able to make another infect creature just in case if our Glistener Elf or Blighted Agent does die. Of course, it's add one in colors to your mana pool, or we can pay one, and Ink Moth Nexus becomes a 1 1 Blink Moth artifact creature with flying and infect until end of turn. It's still a land. So, of course, that means that a Ghost Quarter or a Field of Ruin can 
still grab it. But having Flying does mean we have the added advantage of being able to go over our opponent's creatures. Uh, next up here for us, we have two Penal Haven because our, both of our creatures are 1-1s. One we can add one green mana to our mana pool, or we can tap it. Target 1-1 one, one creature gets plus 1, plus 2 until end of turn. So that means the Blighted Agent is getting in for two points of infect damage. Very, very good. We only want two in the deck, though, because it is a legendary land, which means we can't have more than one on the battlefield at a time. So that's a bit of a downer, uh, but that does mean that we only need two in the deck. And the last eight lands in here in the deck are four forest and four island. And that is it uh, for the mana base. Now we could have done fetch lands, we could have done pain lands, we could have done a bunch of other different ways to build this deck, even Rogue's Passage uh, for the Glister Elf. I did think about that as well. But I do think we want to keep this kind of on the cheap side for now. I think that's fine. I don't think you necessarily need fetch lands and pain lands and all that kind of stuff to uh, kind of drain you of your life and thin your deck slightly. I do think this is very much a, if you have the hand, you're going to win. If you don't, you're going to lose. Or if your opponent has removal, they will win. If they don't, they're going to lose. I think it's kind of one of those kind of decks. Uh, so you definitely want to kind of uh, make sure you pace yourself that way towards playing this deck. Again, it's more of a casual kitchen table style deck and not necessarily a tier one. I'm going to take this to an FNM and rock some faces. I think having that surprise deck in game one, though, is definitely worth it and worth the reason for this deck to exist. So that is the full 60 on the game one game plan. Of course, game one, we want to get out a Glistener Elf on turn one. We want to get out a turn two land and then attack and hopefully if our board is clear with a Glistener Elf, hopefully uh, pump it with vines, maybe old Krosa, and then get in some mutagenic growth to close out a match on a turn two, which is ridiculous, or get out a turn two, maybe get out a, a Blighted Agent and slowly wear them down with a Blighted Agent that's unblockable as well. But that is it for main board. What can we do against other like decks that are siding against us in main game two? Let's go to our sideboard here really quickly. We have two Tormont's Crypt here, a zero mana artifact. We can tap it and sacrifice it, exile all cards from target player's graveyard. So really good against Delve, really good against, you know, any kind of decks that have lots of graveyard interaction, like a Storm, anything with flashback, stuff like that. We have Crypt here to be a great way to answer those kind of decks in the early game as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, next up here for us, we have four Dispel, Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, and of course, Path of I'll keep mentioning them in this, this uh, deck deck here, but those are very important instant speed cards that we need to deal with. This spell is going to help us do that. It's a four of one blue mana instant counter target instant spell. Super simple, super straightforward, um, and a card we definitely need against an opponent. Moving up here, we have four Nature's Claim. This is a four of one green mana instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains four life. So the, the gaining four life is actually not that bad for us because we're not really worried about them gaining life because we're doing infect damage. So if we get to 10 infect damage, we win the game. So doing any kind of actual direct damage is not what we're about at all. So using Nature's Claim here as an instant to just destroy an artifact or enchantment is great. Having them gain life does not matter to us in the least. Uh, next up here for us, we have two Pithy Needle. Namies and Planeswalkers like Liliana of the Veil will be a super bomb win for us uh, to be able to hopefully slow them down. Uh, of course, you know Liliana has a plus here for us to be able to have a target opponent sacrifice a creature. So if we only have Glistener Elf or Blighted Agent, we're going to be sacrificing that. We want to have Pithy Needle coming in on game two, being able to hopefully shut down or slow down a Liliana of the Veil as quickly as possible. And if you guys don't know, it's a two of one colorless artifact. As Pithy Needle, it must be able to name a card and activate the abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. And yes, that means we're shutting down all Planeswalkers of any type, basically. <laughs> and the last cards in the uh, sideboard here for us are three Dismember. I actually didn't think these were that expensive until I looked, and wow, these are kind of expensive uh, for what they do. Of course, it's one Carlos and two Black Frexian mana. Of course, that's going to be four life for us, so one Carlos and four life. Uh, it's a three of. Target creature gets negative five, negative five until end of turn. So a great way to hopefully slow down our opponent and get rid of some creatures on their side of the field as quickly as possible for a Glistener Elf to get in to do some extra infect damage. And that is the full sideboard and the full 75 for the Simic uh, infect deck here. Let's just go to the full deck layout here. On MPGO, Traders is coming to about 90 tickets, which isn't too bad. And in paper, it's only coming to about 160 bucks, which if you guys know modern, that's pretty cheap on the or on the cheap side. I would say that's more the mid tier to upper tier uh, deck list in the actual standard format. But in modern, I think that's relatively cheap, especially when we don't have fetch lands or anything like that mucking up our land base. But yes, turn one, get out of Glistener Elf, get out another land, go Might of Old Crosa or Vine of Vastwood, and hopefully get in some Mutagenic Growth for a turn to kill. If we can't, we want to go for a Blighted Agent, and then go for some, you know, turn over turn, nice infect damage until they're dead, hopefully by turn five or four. Sideboard game plan, if they have a lot of removal, we're going to be boarding in Dispels. If they have Planeswalkers like Liliana, we want to board in Pithing Needle, and if they have things like Artifacts and Affinity, we want to board in Nature's Claim. Very simple, very straightforward. And that's going to do it for this deck tech, guys. I hope you liked it. Do you have any suggestions for it? I would love to hear them in the comments below. Uh, 
how you feel about the hair? Is it too too different? Too strange? I know I know I'm getting a lot of different comments uh, from family and friends. They're kind of uh, weirded out about it. <laughs> <laughs> I might die back eventually, uh, but hope you guys liked it. Hope you guys liked the video. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the stream or in the next video. Peace.